Good morning from beautiful Loch Lomond here in Scotland. My name is Eileen and today is my wedding day. The most special day in my adult life. One I've dreamed of since I was a little girl. And one of the most memorable days I think I'll ever have. In just a few short hours, I'll be getting my hair and makeup done and I'll be walking down the aisle to the most incredible man, Donald. Although today is filled with lots of happiness, it's also a difficult day for my partner, my family and I. As only eight months ago, we lost the other most incredible man in my life, my dad, John McMillan. John McMillan to me was my hero. He was the best dad. Before I knew the man that I would marry, I had dreamed of today and all the magical moments that me and my dad would have. Never did I think when I was planning my wedding less than two years ago that my dad wouldn't be here today. I've been reflecting on weddings and all the traditions it brings. They aren't for everyone, but I really wanted some of the moments. Like the first time a dad sees his daughter in a wedding dress. The special moment that you have, just you and him, in the wedding car or before you walk down the aisle. The words of love and wisdom that he gives you. We would have both walked down that aisle, arm in arm, big beaming smiles and full of pride. And my dad would have given my partner the biggest hug as he reached the bottom to give me away. The father of the bride's speech that my dad would have had everybody in stitches. And of course, the father of daughter dance. Not to mention that my dad was the life and soul of a party. And even if you weren't the bride, he would still be really missed today. I've been grieving the loss of my dad for the past eight months and the massive gap he's left in my life. I've also been grieving the day I dreamed of as my original wedding day with him by my side. On the 23rd of February 2020, just before the whole world changed, my world was already changing. My dad entered hospital with what he thought was a suspected heart attack at the time. After an assessment, his heart was given the all clear that there was something wrong. There was fluid in his left lung. And after draining, they discovered that there was a thickening of the lining. It took us four months to get a diagnosis. My dad's health already deteriorating. He had mesothelioma with a prognosis of months, not years, left to live. My dad was a fit man. He was retired, but he never stopped working. He looked after his two youngest grandkids, three to four days a week, who were the absolute apple of his eye. They run circles round me, never mind a man in his seventies. He played golf twice a week. He loved a night out with his friends to his local pub. One of my brothers would often have him doing jobs about the house. My, na my dad never got sick, not really. So to say that we were short was an understatement. I remember back in February 2020, sitting with my dad when he was first asked about asbestos by his consultant. My dad's reply was, I did work with stuff, but never the blue one. Even after years of exposure, now retired, he still wasn't aware of his risk. My dad didn't have to live through his pain long. He died on September the 13th. 2020, just a little after midnight, with me by his side. He only got seven months, from Tate Nell to his last breath. I think we are still trying to get our heads around that, but we're lucky in a sense. He didn't suffer long. He knew how much he was loved, and although the seven months were some of our hardest, we laughed every single day. I wish my story was unique, but unfortunately I'm not the only bride. 
who has lost someone to mesothelioma and other asbestos-related diseases. And, that, and what's even sadder is the fact that I won't be the last. That's why I'm here talking to the camera pretty badly and I apologise for that before the rest of my bridal party get up. Today didn't have to happen this way. I could have had it all. Everything I ever dreamed of. If only, if only people had taken better care of my dad and stopped his exposure. This isn't easy for me, as I'm sure you can tell. But I believe it's important for me to raise awareness of the risk in the hope that it reduces others' exposure. Unfortunately, I can't save my dad. But I don't want anyone to lose a loved one the way my family and I have. My dad didn't have to die this way. It could have and it should have been prevented. <laughs> That's why my family and I support the work of Action on Asbestos. We are so grateful for their support. They were there for us throughout my dad's illness. And even after, when I had a number of questions about his condition and trying to understand what had happened. Their role is so impo important. Unfortunately, there are people being diagnosed with asbestos related diseases right now. They and their families need supported through their disease and after their loved ones are gone. Action on asbestos throughout the UK don't just support asbestos victims and their families, but they also do a lot of work around prevention to stop exposure for others. So people like me don't need to be without their heroes on days like today. Of particular importance is their campaign to have asbestos removed from schools in Scotland. To think that children could be exposed to this dangerous substance is not just scary to me, but completely unlawful. I'm not yet a parent, but one day I hope to be. And the thought of sending my child to a school where there's any risk is unbearable to me. We now know the risks. We've seen the harm. There are no excuses to why we should allow people to continue to be exposed when we know what we can do to eliminate it. Please take action and do what you can to support Action on Asbestos so that future generations don't have to be like me. I'm off to get married now, but thank you for taking the time to listen to my story about my dad and I. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.